let's do it I'll start uh, the reaction by adding a small amount of baking soda here okay then I dissolve it I should use distilled water so I'm I will bring the distilled water you can stop the video okay okay now I will add distilled water Okay, just small amount. Then what we'll do, we'll add vinegar. Two observations should be obtained from this reaction. The first observation is the effervescence or the, the bubbling. And the second observation is the barium hydroxide test to characterize carbon dioxide gas. Yes. Okay, this is the first observation, bubbling. Now carbon dioxide, as we told you, it's colorless and odorless. So to characterize it, what I'll do? I'll hold a drop of barium hydroxide like this. It's a clear drop. Then when this drop is exposed to carbon dioxide gas, it should be turbid. Okay, so let's, let's do it. To restart the reaction, I add extra amount of sodium hydroxide. It should be very quick. Okay. Then we we'll wait. What will happen to the drop? I don't know if the turbidity is clear. Okay, just look to the drop. Okay. The drop became turbid due to the formation of barium carbonate. So this is the characteristic test of barium of uh, sorry carbon dioxide. The third household chemical is table salt. All of us know that table salt consists of sodium chloride. So how to distinguish or how to characterize sodium chloride? I am going to do two tests. One of them is with sulfuric acid, strong, very strong acid. What will happen? When table salt reacts with sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid will be evolved, will be produced. Hydrochloric acid is a pungent gas. Pungent means it's a strong gas. It has a very, very strong and dangerous, by the way. It's very dangerous, very strong smell. And it's acidic. It's a strong acid. So to characterize it, this time I'm going to use a blue litmus paper because hydrochloric acid is acidic, so the blue litmus paper it should turn red. So let's do it. I'll add a small amount of table salt. Here is table salt. Okay. Then I reacted with sulfuric acid. Here is sulfuric acid. The reaction will take place immediately. Okay. Look, these bubbles, they are what? They are hydrogen chloride gas. So I'll add or I'll put the litmus paper like this, then I wait. What happens? The blue litmus paper turns red due to the formation of hydrochloric acid. Actually, you should characterize the smell of hydrochloric acid, but I don't advise you to do it because hydrochloric acid is very pungent and strong and a little bit dangerous. So I am not going to uh, do this part. The second test by which I can characterize table salt is the reaction with in the reaction with Ag and O3. Stop it. Okay, the first test was uh, high um, uh, sulfuric acid, and the second test by which we can distinguish or we can sorry, characterize table salt is the reaction with Ag and O3, silver nitrate. What will happen? Here I add a small amount of table salt. I dissolve it in distilled water. Then, 
we react it with AG and O3, silver nitrate. When silver nitrate reacts with sodium chloride, AgCl will be formed. AgCl is silver chloride. Silver chloride is insoluble salt. So the observation is the formation of white precipitate. White precipitate is due to the formation of silver chloride. So let's do it. But before that, I have to dissolve the whole amount of sodium chloride very well. Then I add one drop of nitric acid. Nitric acid, this is just as a catalyst, catalyst to increase the rate of the reaction. Okay. If you do, if you do not add it, the reaction will take place also. So no problem. Then I add small amount of silver nitrate. Now look what will happen. A white precipitate should be formed. Okay. Look at this. This white precipitate formed due to the formation of silver chloride. Okay, that's it. Stop. Uh, the fourth household chemical is Epsom salt. Epsom salt, uh, uh, the chemical composition of Epsom salt uh, basically is magnesium sulfate. So we are going to characterize the sulfate anion in magnesium sulfate. If we characterize it, we can say that this is a, uh, we can characterize the Epsom salt. So what will you do? We react a small amount of Epsom salt. First, we dissolve it in water. Then we react it with barium chloride. The equation, as I told you, all equations are given in the lab manual. So they react with each other. And uh, barium sulfate will be formed. Barium sulfate is a white precipitate. So this is the observation of this list. Okay. I dissolve it in water by continuous shaking. Then we react it with barium chloride. Okay. Now look what will happen. I add a small amount of barium chloride and I will wait the formation of white precipitate. This white precipitate is formed due to the formation of barium sulfate. So this is the characterization or the characteristic test of Epsom salt. Now I am going to do the fifth household chemical, which is bathroom cleaner. Most bathroom cleaners consist of diluted hydrochloric acid, HCl. So the characterization test is the reaction with limestone. Limestone is in Arabic Hajar al-Jil, Hajar al-Tabashir, al-Tabashir. So what will happen when they react with each other? Carbon dioxide gas again will be produced. The equation in your lab manual, you can write it, you can, uh, okay? Just, I will bring a copper. Add a small amount of Bathroom cleaner, here is bathroom cleaner, then add limestone. A strong bubbling will take place now. Look what happens. Okay. Due to what? Due to the formation of carbon dioxide gas. Again, how can we characterize carbon dioxide gas? We can do or repeat the barium hydroxide test that we did it in the first part uh, with the baking soda, the same experiment. The last household chemical is a bleach. Here is a bleach. Now the reaction will take place in two steps. The first step is the reaction with potassium iodide, Ki, with the bleach. What will happen? First of all, what's the composition of the bleach? Bleach consists of uh, sodium hypochlorite. It's NaOCl. It's a strong oxidizing agent. So when bleach reacts with Ki, potassium iodide, the iodide anion in potassium iodide will be oxidized to produce iodine. Iodine is a brown element. So the color will be very clear here, dark, yellow, or brown color. This is due to formation of iodine. How to characterize iodine? The last step, this is the second step of the reaction. We react iodine with starch. Starch, 
react strongly with iodine to produce a dark blue complex. But because we are using the starch with a bad quality, we don't expect the color to be dark blue, it will be like a black. Okay? So yeah, well, let's do it. First of all, I start with a small amount of potassium iodide. It's colorless. Okay? Iodide is colorless. Then, when I react with the bleach, sodium hypochlorite, iodide will be oxidized to iodine. So the color will turn brown. Okay? As you can see here. Okay? This is brown color due to formation of iodine. This is the oxidation step. How to characterize iodine? By reaction with starch. When they react with each other, as I told you, it should be dark blue, but I think because the starch is bad quality, we will get a black color, something like this, or a green, a green color. That's it. So in short, what we did now, we carried out at least one chemical test to characterize each of these household chemicals. The only thing that you have to do is to follow the video for each part, and to go directly to where? Directly, after each part, go and fill the lab report. The lab report will ask you to write the chemical test. As I told you, just write the title or the name of the chemical test in the first column. In the second column, write the observation or the observations that you can review them from the video. And the last part, write the chemical equation which is related to each part from the theoretical part in your lab manual. And that's it. Thank you very much.